On Sunday, December 1, 2013, an unusual event took place over the forests of Guam, a U.S. territory in the Pacific, when 2,000 dead mice attached to tiny parachutes made of cardboard and green tissue paper were dropped from helicopters in a carefully timed sequence. The rodents, some equipped with mini radio transmitters, were laced with acetaminophen, a common painkiller lethal to brown tree snakes. They were attached to two pieces of cardboard and a layer of green tissue paper forming a makeshift parachute that looked like an upside-down horseshoe. Some mice were even equipped with tiny radios to track their descent. But these rodents weren't on some kind of wild animal stunt. In fact, they weren't even alive. And that was the whole point. These mice had been pumped full of acetaminophen, the active ingredient in common painkillers like Tylenol. While it's safe for humans in small doses, for one particular invader it's lethal. This wasn't some bizarre science experiment. It was part of an $8 million US approved program to combat an ecological disaster, one that started nearly 70 years earlier with the arrival of an uninvited guest, the brown tree snake. The brown tree snake is native to Australia, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands. But sometime after World War II, it hitched a ride to Guam, likely clinging to military cargo or aircraft. Once it got there, it found paradise. Guam is small, just 31 miles long and 6 miles wide, but the snakes thrived. With no natural predators and plenty of prey, their population exploded. By 2013, there were an estimated 2 million of them on the island. When they're young, brown tree snakes feed on small lizards. But as they grow, some reaching 10 feet in length, their appetite shifts to rodents and birds. One snake was even found digesting a bird that weighed 80% of its own body weight. The result? Ecological collapse. Within one generation, brown tree snakes wiped out 75% of the island's bird population. 10 out of the 12 native bird species vanished. With fewer birds to eat spiders, Guam saw a 40-fold increase in spider populations compared to nearby islands. Forests began to decay. Tree growth dropped by as much as 92% because birds weren't around to spread seeds. And that was just the beginning. Brown snakes didn't just disrupt the ecosystem, they impacted human life too. These snakes started showing up everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere, in houses, compounds, and even toilets. Imagine being a teacher and hearing this excuse, sorry I'm late. There was a snake in my toilet. And the crazy part? That would be a valid excuse in Guam. Brown tree snakes have a nasty habit of climbing power lines and electrical substations, triggering blackouts across the island. According to the U.S. Department of the Interior, these snakes caused an average of 80 power outages per year, costing about $4 million annually. Over 20 years, they were responsible for more than 2,000 outages. And as if that wasn't enough, the snakes began hitching rides to other islands in the Pacific, threatening even more isolated ecosystems. The fear was they might even reach Hawaii, where local animals have no natural defenses against such predators. Traditional methods weren't enough. Traps, detection dogs, and trained inspectors helped a little, but they couldn't keep up. So scientists decided it was time for something radical, poisoned mice parachuted into snake-infested jungle canopies. Here's how it works. The brown tree snake has an unusual weakness to acetaminophen. Just 80 milligrams, about one-sixth of a standard pill, is enough to kill it. So scientists stuffed each mouse with a lethal dose and airdropped them into the forest canopy where the snakes like to hunt. Because the baits are placed high in the trees, they're out of reach for most other animals. A pig or dog would need to eat hundreds of them to be harmed. Monitor lizards might be at risk, but they rarely feed in the canopy. Still, animal rights groups like PETA criticize the method, calling it inhumane due to the way acetaminophen kills, slowly, through liver failure. But for the USDA and environmental scientists, it was a matter of scale. Dropping poison bait from helicopters covered more ground, used fewer resources, and was more efficient than trapping snakes one by one. Designed to wipe out all the snakes. 
just to contain their numbers and prevent them from spreading to other islands. Even today, most of Guam's snake population remains concentrated in jungle areas that are difficult to reach. In 2020, the U.S. government invested another $3.4 million to continue the fight. Whether they'll use poison mice again remains to be seen, but it's clear that this isn't the first or last time humans have used poison bait to fight invasive species. On Pinzone Island in the Galapagos, a monumental operation was launched to eradicate an ecological nightmare, 180 million rats. These invasive rodents, introduced by European sailors in the 1700s, had turned the island into a battleground for survival. For over a century, the rats relentlessly preyed upon the vulnerable eggs and hatchlings of the island's iconic giant tortoises, pushing the species to the brink. As a result, no tortoise had hatched in the wild on Pinzone Island in over 100 years. The delicate balance of life on the island had been shattered. In 2012, a massive, coordinated effort was made to reverse this devastation. Using 22 tons of specially engineered, rat-targeting poison bait, helicopters equipped with GPS-guided precision dropped the bait across every corner of the island. The goal was clear, remove every last rat while safeguarding the rest of the ecosystem from collateral damage. After the poison had done its work, conservationists remained vigilant, monitoring the island to ensure total eradication. One year later, the unthinkable happened. Baby tortoises were seen emerging from the sand, their tiny shells glinting in the sun. It was the first time in over a century that hatchlings had made their way into the wild. The restoration of this ancient species, made possible by years of painstaking effort, was a moment of hope, and proof that with dedication, nature can be healed. Even invasive wasps in New Zealand have been targeted with sardine-laced poison, part of a bold strategy to defend native wildlife and safeguard the country's vital honey industry. It all began back in the 1980s, when two invasive species, the German wasp and the common wasp, hitchhiked their way to New Zealand through international shipping routes. With no natural predators to stop them, their population exploded. These aggressive invaders began wiping out native insects, stealing nectar from local birds, and raiding beehives, posing a serious threat to both biodiversity and commercial honey production. Faced with this growing menace, scientists deployed a surprisingly effective and slightly fishy solution, bait infused with the pesticide fipronil, blended with the pungent scent of canned sardines. Irresistible to protein-hungry wasps, the bait was carried back to their nests, where it silently decimated entire colonies. The Outcome In targeted zones, wasp populations plummeted by an astonishing 80 to 90 percent. A quiet victory in the ongoing war to protect New Zealand's delicate ecosystems. The story of Guam's mice isn't just about weird science or dead rodents. It's about the struggle to restore balance, to fix what went wrong when an uninvited predator arrived by accident and took over. So next time you take a painkiller for a headache, remember, for one invasive snake, it's a deadly poison. Do you think dropping poison mice from helicopters was genius or a step too far? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this story, give it a like, hit subscribe, and turn on that bell so you don't miss the next wild twist in nature's fight for balance.